Party the midnight summer away with fairies, druids, and all things mystical at the Mattress Factory's 2019 Urban Garden Party, Solstice, on Friday, June 21st. Feast and imbibe with some of the city's best restaurants and bars. Hit the dance floor with music by Beauty Slap, Bad Custer, and DJ Samuel Andres, and bid on one-of-a-kind works at the art auction. Tickets are on sale now at mattress.org. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA on this wonderful sunny day, as you can probably can tell by some of our shots here, because we're trying to hide in the shadows of cardboard cutouts. Uh, that's why there's a Iron Man shadow, a shaped shadow around me right now. Uh, but we got the crew in studio this week. John Chichilla from uh, Gadget Guru from Big Bank International Esquire wearing his uh, it, his uh, unidentifiable shirt. It's, it's my video <gasps> disruption field. Yay! Oh. How's it going today? There it is. What's up? Not oh, much, not much. I am. I, I like my little shadowy shot. It's kind of like I'm in the backside of a cave. It, it's it really kind of right is. behind me, though. You have a very Shawn Michaels shaped uh, shadow around you there. Uh, <laughs> Also with us back in studio is Katie, Katie Dutters. Hi, friends. Sales and marketing director of the Scare House, the, the newly relocated Scare House. Oi, so much happening. Here we, here you relocated? Was, yeah, Scare yes. House is taking a year off I to hope. relook. Yeah. Oh. So Scare House is relocating. Uh, the Haunted House is relocating, and we're not going to be open until 2020 because it's going to take us that long to get everything together. But the basement is separating off, and this basement has a new location and will be open in this fall. The oh, basement okay. will be in Dutter's basement. And my house. <laughs> Come to my house, into my basement. That would be great if it is just like somebody's basement. You and my cat, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary enough. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so a lot of lot of stuff, a lot of changes happening over in the scare house world. Mm-hmm. Yes. And of course, producer Missy is here this week with us, keeping everything in line. Uh, but this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can also drop us a line at awesome cast at sorgatronmedia.com uh tweet us or hit us up on facebook and uh when you hit up that email address you can hit up producer missy about uh if you want to be here live live as we're talking about the the what's really live here with awesome cast chilla and somebody can be live with us here in the studio audience yes. or if you are want to reach out about some great advertising opportunities i know you guys have been hearing about the mattress factory the last couple of weeks here on the show i hope you guys are checking out that event and support the people that support the show uh also uh we are live here every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern on facebook live and a lot of other platforms as well for the awesome cast uh but of course you want to be part of the chat and uh and part of the conversation please join us over on the facebook live event for this uh every week at 7 p.m eastern time and we're also carried on our friends riverspgh.com on saturdays at 9 a.m eastern and the 405 media.com they're carrying us weekdays at 9 a.m pacific time noon eastern time if you want to check that out uh also thank you to our patreon supporters our friends at the coffee club five dollar level they get a little bit of awesome cast after dark matt weller john dicky de and john carmen and our longest running uh patreon supporter at the fan of the show dollar level michael fedor thank you so much everybody supporting the show and helping the awesome continue as we celebrate this i believe nine years of awesome cast that was of like this month so uh awesome is there like a nine-year anniversary show i I, not not really i didn't really plan anything should we have a cake or something (laughs) i don't know i don't don't know so i'm not good at planning anniversaries we have pizza. We do have we pizza. We have anniversary pizza and buffalo chicken salad. So we, we got it. Uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Chilla, I think I'm with you on this awesome thing. So, in yeah, so um, 
Nintendo made an announcement, and I think we we've, we've talked about Mario Kart coming out, but randomly, at least to my knowledge, it was pretty random. They said that we will have Doctor Mario on iOS and Android in merely right. three weeks. Yay. What? <laughs> um, they didn't. I think what maybe didn't kind of caught me off guard that it was going to be launching so soon because it's coming out on July 10th. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no beta. Like we saw the beta, and a lot of people wrote which, online about the beta for, for Mario, Mario Kart, Kart, which was the only the only time I think they've done that. But right. it, but also I think it's a it's a wholly different developer too. I think DNA was the developer for uh, Mario Kart. Okay. So, um, but also did you you notice how much they flipped how this works too? It's no longer like the, the they're dropping it, they're they're falling up. You bring you. You slide the the uh, the pill into the screen, and then let it fall upwards. That and I, you you have a limited number of capsules. Yeah, it's, it's going to be one <clears throat> of those kind of uh, time release stamina kind of things. Uh, Mario Kart had that a little bit too, so it's going to be one of those freemium kind of games. So, which I mean, if it's not annoying, I mean, I'm I'm okay with that. And there's going to be worlds and that you're traveling through and everything. And there's like five to, to start with. So I will not show footage because every time we show footage from a Nintendo announcement, we get a notice from YouTube. So oh, really? that's not going to happen. Nintendo is really not great about those. So I'm not going to show much Mario Kart, but um, or Mario, Dr. Mario. Uh, but you, it, will, you will get to play one-on-one showdowns with other people. Mm-hmm. What I didn't hear is, can I pick the person I'm or is it a random choice? Like, thing? A ran- like can we play each other, or yeah. or is it just gonna be random? And then you can send and receive stamina giving hearts. Mm-hmm. Um, were the two things that I I kind of saw about the show. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to the upgrade of playing more than the, my original cartridge of Doctor Mario that's on my bedside. Uh, Katie, are you are you uh, ready to find the cure? Whoa, oh, whoa. Oh. I'm going to be up all night just playing games. <laughs> Go to sleep. Nope. <laughs> I already lost a lot of sleep for the Dr. Mario, or I'm sorry, the Mario Kart beta. So, yeah. Uh, Katie, what is your awesome thing of the week? Uh, so, YouTube's got a new AR. It's called Beauty Try On. It lets viewers virtually try on makeup while watching uh, video reviews. Mm. So, you could be watching these. Uh, essentially, they're offering it. It's a new AR feature, obviously. And essentially, while you're in a YouTube app, um, you could watch somebody talk about their makeup and do like an influencer doing their makeup. And you could be like, well, I want to try on that specific lipstick. And you could try on various colors or whatever the particular item is mm-hmm. um, through YouTube, which is pretty cool. This seems like, you know, we, we, we've kind of seen YouTube talking about what they're doing with the video game side with Stadia and YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like this is... They're rolling into these kind of extra technologies a bit, uh, these in, these enhancement uh, deals. Um, that's that's kind of interesting. But yeah, uh, Google's all in on this AR thing. Yeah, like even they were talking about like the Google search and updates to the different AR core. Um, but yeah, there's the, there's other apps you can use, but this is like the first time within a makeup tutorial video like YouTube that you're mm-hmm. able to do this. That'll it's be interesting to see. Cool. So, so now it's going to be. I go through YouTube. I can, I can click an AR some makeup. I can click and play the video game that I'm watching, or join it, or <laughs> whatever. Like. Is one of the things that yeah. Or I can put on my makeup while I'm playing Fortnite. That's perfect. There you go. Yeah. Well, I wonder. So, if they're going to allow you to click through to purchase the makeup you're tr- virtually trying on and mm-hmm. watching, mm-hmm. who gets the credit for the click through? Does Google get it, or it- does? The probably the influencer gets something gets in. Yeah, probably a little and bit Google of both. Gets something? Oh, I'm sure they yeah. get something. Oh, yeah. I mean, they wouldn't be putting this if they weren't getting a little bit off of this. It's just another way to get a couple pennies. Or they just they just capturing faces for... <laughs> that, too. This is not a real face.com. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's that, too. There's that, too. Can, can I slap a face on this video? Is that a new feature on, on, on YouTube, too? This so. is me. Um, I started working a little bit with, uh, uh, changing up my stuff with Instagram. Uh, you know, we, we, we talked about it. I forget if we talked about it on the show, but they, you're now allowed to have horizontal video in uh, Instagram TV and it'll actually like not stretch it out crazy vertically or anything like that. Um, so I do the, the IGTV is the thing that's kind of made sense for when I'm, I'm doing the, 
uh, I'm doing the uh, 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 pro wrestling clips, right? It, it's it's a good spot for that. I'm already doing like minute, two minute clips, but you know you're limited to, to one minute on Instagram itself. I like to do like two minutes ish, right? IGTV, you have less of a uh, uh, limitation on on what you can put out video wise. So um, so that when they when they changed landscape, I started looking again at IGTV and what we could do differently to kind of enhance that a little bit more. So I changed my strategy up a little bit. Instead of posting, like I would post to like a version of it to the stories, version of it to Instagram and a version to IGTV and they all be wildly different because of the different formats, right? And lengths and all that kind of stuff. Um, while I still put a minute of it that gets split up in stories, I've been posting the videos to Instagram, or, I'm sorry, IGTV and you can check a box. One will send it to Facebook, which I think is weird and I wouldn't do it. Uh, one will, uh, at least in this instance, one will send it to your Instagram feed as a preview. So you can watch the first minute on Instagram, click a button and follow through for the rest of the video over on IGTV. I've seen some other brands doing this too. So ideally I could preview a match where we're still doing clips currently, but I could preview part of a match on Instagram TV and put in an entire 10, 15 minute match on IGTV. So could you do it where like the first minute is like in this episode, you're going to see and yeah, like yeah, a do like bit. a bunch of run, like a pre-roll type thing. And then, mm -hmm. and that's the first minute mm -hmm. and then have the full video. So then you're always getting the preview as the first minute. Yeah. on Instagram yeah. and then the click through. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've seen I've seen versions of that. Now, I don't know if it does anything but cut off at the first minute. Like I don't know if you can set where that preview ends. Okay. So I think you're always stuck with it. Well, you just got to always do a 60 second preview. But I found myself going through Instagram starting to watch a video, actually getting into the video and wanting to watch more than that first minute of somebody mm. talking about a topic or something and I hit the button at the bottom says you know says watch the full thing on the IGTV it flips over to the IGTV version and we're good to go um when it flips over to IGTV does it f automatically go 1 minute in or do you have to rewatch the first I minute? think it starts at the beginning okay I don't think it's been smart about that so yet. you lose 60 seconds so of you your life yes, yes you did yes you did hopefully you decided to go over to it early or are you, and I think you can you you can move it you can move the cursor on an Instagram video. Yeah. So, uh, Kitty, have you been playing with this with Scarehouse? Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that far yet. Nope. Not that cool. Um, but I mean, but it seems it actually seems like the perfect thing for integrating on uh, the Scarehouse videos that mm -hmm. you guys already put on YouTube and, and Facebook, right? Well, I think a lot of it was was waiting until it got landscape. Yes. Those options because a lot of our stuff and we're uh, in like some of the focus. It's just reformatting yep. everything. It was a pain in the ass, right? That's the same mm -hmm. thing here. That, a, that was a barrier for me to try to get to it. It's so like, nope. I don't have a, 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 a bunch of interns to say, here, go square these videos, you know, <laughs> or anything like that. So I know I know you have some intern power, at least a little bit over there. So it'll be interesting now that Shortcuts is coming to the Mac. Mm -hmm. we, I wonder if there'll be kind of like a quick recipe that you could do to please <laughs> is to there, quickly square your videos, please. I, I wish there was something like that on the phone. That, that I could do, and I don't know. I don't know that there is because I don't think. Well, there'll be a crop and rotate now. There'll be a crop and rotate, which you could work in the shortcuts, right? Yeah, and I can just apply hit a, in shortcuts is is its own. You won't be able to. I bet you you wouldn't be able to pan the square. Mm -hmm. Like it, you, it would just be squared in the middle. Squared in the middle, yeah. or you could probably square to the left or square to the right. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be it. Set three different recipes: one square left, one square center, one mm -hmm. square right. And I also realized as I was going through, you know, doing my usual wrestling uploads on Monday nights, uh, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm dropping all these into a iCloud drive on my desktop, bringing it down on my phone and posting it. And I forgot IGTV has web upload mm. and I haven't mm -hmm. used it since they've updated it. So th that automatically takes some of the pain of pushing <laughs> them to my phone out of the, out of the, the rotation. So now I need to, get that in my head to like, no, go to the site and remember how to get to IGTV and everything like that. So, and partner says he's seen that and, and wondered if there was an automated way to do that. Yeah. Basically you post that to IGTV, hit the, hit the, hit the tab and it'll do that. And then say, they'll, they'll do Facebook too, if it makes sense for you. So, but I like to do different things with, on Facebook with tagging and everything. So it doesn't, well, I've doesn't seen, make sense for me to cross promote. <clears throat> I've seen where people have written recipes that will take 
any screenshot on any I, iOS device, and it'll figure out what a, a iOS device it was taken on, and then automatically add the trim around it to make it look like it's from oh. that model of device. Yeah, I, I remember we were talking about this. <clears> we before, talked about that. We? Yeah, so I'm sure you could do something like this so, in the same automated fashion. So I'm wondering. So, um, I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, okay, so there's that. There's no, I lost my train of thought. There it is. It's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. It's gone. It's in the archives. Yes. Um, oh, the side thing has nothing to do with anything. But I, I, I had a discovery the other day. I didn't realize in the latest Mac OS you can right click and say take photo with my phone or iPad. It'll cue your phone. It will say, okay, go take it, and I'll take a picture with my phone, and that picture will automatically show up on my desktop. Yes. You can also do scan documents. Yeah, I think you could do the same thing like with an insert. Like if you're in certain applications like pages or whatnot, mm. you can do the same thing. You can like insert right into a document or a presentation or anything like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's nice being in the one ecosystem uh so uh so uh with that hey we do a lot of stuff here uh with social media video all kinds of fun things here and that is part of ours over at the sidekick media services wing of our uh, stuff going on here from sporting events to music video production to conferences and everywhere in between uh, our team here at psychic media services myself producer missy and the dutters uh has you covered <laughs> as a sidekick to your superhero project the what next big thing can we help you with you can find out more at sidekickmediasurfaces.com you can see we've been doing a lot of stuff lately helping out innovation works with the creative uh i'm sorry the uh, caffeinated innovation podcast that's been recording last week uh as well as some productions with our friends at sae going out to nebraska tomorrow for formula as well as helping out our friends at Work Hard Pittsburgh with a live stream this weekend with the John Page Classic. A lot of fun stuff going on. Go check it out over at SidekickMediaServices.com and see what we're doing when we're not being awesome. Well, being awesome in other ways off of the awesome cast. So, all right. We got a couple of stories here that you guys have put out there on uh, if you want to join our awesome cast Facebook group. Uh, that's where a lot of uh, great stories are coming through and uh, you guys are sharing those. Uh, first of all, here's one from our friends over at PGH Museums. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Our friend Brian Crawford is working on those over there. Uh, this was a robot that will draw your picture. Uh, I said, but only till Sunday. I think we missed that so far. It was part of, it was part of a uh, Invisible Man installation available for free at the Wood Street Galleries uh, for a couple days there. Um, so that's really cool. So it's a, it's a ro it's like one of those pneumatic robot arms and it's, uh, apparently drawing your picture. Whoops. So that's a cool thing that they got going over there. Uh, don't expect as much technology coming from, uh, <laughs> the museum side, right? Um, Katie, are you ready for house party? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Did you see this Epic's Fortnite or uh, Fortnite makers Epic bought house party uh, which is, I, did you do, have you looked into what house party is? Not completely. No, not too, too much. It looks like a video chat app of some sort. Um, Oh yeah. It's a team chat app. Yes. It's like a multi. Yeah. yeah. Like, like a multi video. Um, um, Brandon also had this, uh, story in there as well. I mean, this is like, I mean, remember the days where WWE bought a uh, tout. Yeah. Um, and, and try to make that a thing. Uh, so I, I kind of wonder what is, you know, what do you think like like Epic's going to be doing with this? Is, are we going to get House Party integrated into uh, all of our uh, Fortnite and Unreal tournaments in the, in the near future? Well, it makes sense because <clears throat> if you remember the when they discovered the the FaceTime bug where you could hear and see the other side. Mm hmm. Before they picked up. Before they picked up. Mm -hmm. That was found by a bunch of kids playing Fortnite. And that seems to be the way, if you're using a mobile device to play Fortnite, that's how the kids these days are a chatting. The kids these days. So it's not, it's not like on Xbox, right, where I have my headset that's integrated right into Xbox. Right. They're using, and I also wonder, are they using 
third-party chat apps because they're bouncing from system to system or game to game, mm-hmm. and they don't have to worry about joining and unjoining from a voice chat perspective. Yeah, yeah. So and plus, you everybody has like a secondary device or something that they can right. throw on a FaceTime, throw it on the on their desk in front of them, and and then, and then they're going. Right. So, so to me, it makes sense. What'll be inter- what'll be interesting is do they lock this? Into Fortnite, or do they keep it open where you can kind of use it for whatever you want, but Fortnite owns it, and they make maybe joining Fortnite games easier? I, I don't know. Interesting. Um, it, it'll be – it's the first thing, I, I, I think, where they've gone into a social media kind of thing, but, I mean, Fortnite is kind of a social media kind of thing, the way that game comes across. So it'll be interesting to see how they integrate it, and maybe a little bit of the voice chat. Maybe Maybe House Party will be in the game. Uh, at a certain point too but there you don't have the sc- that, that, but that's the problem too is you don't have the screen real estate at least i don't feel like you do in fortnite throw it throw it in the upper corner you know and, Put on and like the an buttons iPhone? will be around it okay maybe and you want a four iPhone. you want a four up video maybe not on a uh, iphone but i mean like a corner of like your pc or your xbox or something like that could be that could be a thing so well, I think uh, one of the interesting things is one of the tweets is if the dec- if the last decade of social media was about sharing, the next decade will be about participating, mm-hmm. which is very interesting and like, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. And along with that YouTube Stadia idea, right? Mm-hmm. Go join the game or buy the game that you are, are witnessing right now, right? So... Be a part of things. Don't just sit on the sidelines and watch and yeah, do the thing. Yeah, you can hit a button and just jump in. So oh, another thing you can jump into, uh, our friend Chris Whitlatch, always checking out all things AR, VR. Apparently there's going to be a Stranger Things AR mobile game coming out, I believe this is next year. It will resemble Pokemon Go. Uh, you, can, I think they could have a lot of fun with that, with the whole upside down thing. You know, like you go to a location and there's like an upside down version of it and, and your, you know, beacons and, and everything. Uh, along with it, and I believe this is uh, this is Next Games. It's a Finnish game developer. Uh, they also uh, created the uh, AMC Walking Dead AR game, as well. So look out for that. I don't know. I, I feel like those are a, the AR games. It's like you have to pick one. Yeah, two max. The, it, like I can play one on the way home, way to work, and one on the way home. But yeah, but you know, you you're dedicated to it. So this is right. going to be you know the Pokemon Go super fans, the Stranger Things super fans, the Harley, the Harry Potter. You you really think like most of the Harry Potter fans are going to play anything but Harry Potter when that thing comes out? Is it out yet? It's not. It's not. It's not I've seen. Yet. It's out in beta. I've not seen, and I think it's was released in like. Australia or something like it was two small countries where Australia. I think they have the, Australia they have a little ahead of time. I guess Australia is a small, it's a small country. Australia. It's not like the size of the United States. It's a continent. Yeah. So is Greenland. Give me a map. I need to figure <laughs> this out. Anyways. Anyways. Well, Greenland's more of an island, but any, yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, Welcome to but, awesome but geography you're, cast. But you're, <laughs> but you're kind of, I don't know. Like, I think there's enough people that have put time and investment into Pokemon mm-hmm. that want to play Harry Potter where they're going to jump over and jump back and forth from time to time. You know, you know if you're like the Harry Potter Pokemon fan, you you got some decision making to make, right? But I, I look at it as too, but you've put all this time in. Like, I'm like level 30. What level am I? I'm close to level 40, which is the highest you can go in Pokemon Go. Mm-hmm. Um. Like I want to at least get to the final level, but I want to play Harry Potter. There's a, there's a wrestler, Mike Quackenbush, that, that posted a picture. Uh, a picture last week. It was uh, a, him reaching level forty in Pokemon Go, and says, "I beat Pokemon." <laughs> 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 so, uh, speaking of video games, E3 was this past week. A lot of announcements there. I think we talked a little bit about the supposed new consoles and everything last week. Uh, Riz shared with us this article from the Gamer, thegamer.com. That's very straightforward. Uh, where uh, apparently the power at E3 died at one point, but the of course all the Nintendo Switch consoles were all on, <laughs> so you could go play Switch. That was a, that's a good that's a good advertisement for them if they're the only ones glowing in that dark uh, corridor there in Los Angeles. So uh, there you go. Nintendo, you know, not really big on the uh, presentation uh, anymore at E3, but uh, apparently they had a, a, a presence in the dark. So. That's cool. So 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 they were on, 
but the TVs were off. So, but still, you could pick them up and play it, huh? Mm-hmm. So, uh, that that's a pretty good advertisement for them. Uh, let's see what else we got here from the awesome cast group. Uh, Dave Podner, Amazon is selling electric uh, an electric shock bracelet that stops you uh, eating fast food. Um, I know it doesn't work, and the science is out of uh, Clockwork Orange, but it's amazing how people will buy stupid stuff. So, so if you want a shock bracelet, <laughs> stop eating, I don't know, McDonald's, I guess. Uh, there you go. It, it's I love it's just a bracelet with, like, a lightning logo on it. <laughs> As if it should be charging you or something. Oh, this poor guy's testing it. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, How does it know? I I don't know. I don't think it does. I don't think it really does. Um, it but just shocks you randomly, yeah, like Venkman <laughs> and Ghostbusters. I think you're close to one that you're out. Uh, let's see. It, it claims it can be used to cure bad, most bad habits within three to five days. Although previous reports have questioned the science behind the device, according to this uh, Yahoo Finance article. By the way, uh, it's called Pavlock. <laughs> Yep, uh, yeah, Ivan Pavlov, if you know Pavlov's dog, you know, things like that. Uh, users have to self-administer the shocks. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> ah, come on. Hey, may, or maybe you just like being shocked because that's where you're at with life. Um, but anyways. Hey, you know who doesn't get sh- need to get shocked for, for uh, doing uh, creative stuff? Our friend Alex Cars. Uh, <laughs> Alex Cars. Media, K A H R S, uh, putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital projects. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Please go check them out, Alex Cars. Media, to get started. Oh uh, boy, I'm working on those. Um, uh, uh, Chilla, we should we should at some point. I, I think Ponder knows what I'm talking about. Um, uh, do you listen to podcasts with like really weird segues? Like, there's a, a Chris Jericho is very <laughs> yeah his is <laughs> his are his because he usually has like the the uh, you know the the Viagra pills and stuff like that <laughs> okay so, well well it, it, it it's good to see what you're up to and by the way I'm up to this and you know it's <laughs> it's like become a joke thing that people have been responding to me uh, with with their segues lately on on Twitter but anyways let's get back to things um, what else do we got here. <laughs> I forgot that I posted about the real sex dolls. Yep, let's talk I about was, this. Your, your first one, I'm super excited about your first one. <laughs> Not the real sex dolls? Not the real sex dolls. <laughs> well, I brought that up, so I might as well. Listen, so uh, we. I think, Katie, you got... you you. I'm going to work on my phrasing here. Yes. Because um, <laughs> I was about to say something really bad. Uh, we've shared before these Engadget uh, YouTube videos. There's like this this, like... CD, I, I forget what it's called. It's like the, the turn on or something, but it's a series that Engadget does, I think, mm-hmm. and where it does talk about like sex dolls and sex toys and, and Pornhub and everything like that. And it's one of those videos. We've had them before. Um, I cannot show this video. What nope. am I even pulling nope. this up I'm show, for? I'm showing Chilla. But it's, it's not that bad. It's the real. Oh, it gets bad. Um, oh, it's it just bad. like it's just a table <laughs> full of vaginas at some point. Um, <laughs> because, Net, show title, write that down. Table full of vaginas. Yes. Uh, Katie, did you watch this video? It's This is really realistic. <laughs> so the real dolls is a thing. Mm-hmm. It, it's been for a while, Anatomically like, correct. But they're actually like try, it, trying to start enhancing that. And they've added like just components to the head itself to respond to you and uh, and look at you and everything like that. And they, they were talking about the uncanny valley that goes along with this. Um, it's a really interesting watch if you're into this and mm-hmm. don't mind a table full of vaginas or other body parts. Um, so I definitely recommend it. It is, uh, let me, let me see if I can double check, uh, something that's safe for you to search. If you go to about 437 or 430, they talk about Teddy Ruxpin. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're basically like, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a Teddy Ruxpin. You can put things in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you the sound off a video is fine. <laughs> yeah. Other than that. Uh, so, uh, go, go check that out. It's, uh, it's, uh, again on the Engadget page, Real Dolls, First Sex Robot Took Me to the Uncanny. Candy Valley. Computer Love is the f- video series that they do over there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it is, seriously is very um, interesting and uh, maybe worth a watch for you. So um, anyways, 
let's go to something safer that we can play with, like Turbo Graphics 16, Chilla. So, did you have or were friends with anyone that had the Turbo Graphics 16? No, no, nobody was cool enough to have a Turbo Graphics 16. Growing up, I had friend, I had a friend Mm -hmm. that had the Turbo Graphics 16, and like we were Boink's Adventure, Bonk's Adventure, or Bonk's Adventure. Um, I know, I know, I know Boink just yeah. fits after that last yes. one. But. Um, mm-hmm. Splatterhouse. It was the thing that I saw on Green Pro TV. It was like, those games look so cool. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like Splatterhouse <clears throat> on my Nintendo. And they were like those slim credit card type mm-hmm. games. I have a couple of the cartridges that I've, I've found, found over the years, right? Like I have like baseball or something. In the like desert. That. Or... And I played them at Replay FX. Okay. So... Like, and that's probably the only time I've really got a chance to play it, but it was always that thing in, like, Game Pro Magazine. We're like, well, that looks so cool, but you could never see it. You never saw it in stores. Um, like, you probably had to get it out of a Sears catalog or something, and and it was just kind of, like, unreachable because you spent all your money on the Super Nintendo, right? I, I didn't even have Super Nintendo. I went from Nintendo's to Sega, Sega Genesis. Genesis, yeah. And then from Sega Genesis, I jumped to N64. Oh, Ooh. roundabout. So I had a weird, yeah. But even even the, the people that I knew, the, the family that I knew that had the TurboGrafx-16, he had the CD attachment for yeah. it. Yeah. Like, there, there was a lot of cool off-brand games that you just couldn't get anywhere and else. And they weren't mm-hmm. really, like, when they were doing the CD attachment, they weren't doing, like, Night Trap. They weren't doing mm-hmm. these video, uh, these video-based games like Sega was doing that were really horrible. They were just doing better versions of the 16-bit games mm-hmm. because they just used the capacity of it, right? In fact, I had a, I've had gotten a couple ROMs for Turbo Graphics, and I have Splatterhouse. I mm-hmm, have mm-hmm. a couple of those games just to, to relive it. the memory. So anyways, the point is, because mini consoles are the biggest thing these days, uh, they're Konami, of all people, I'm kind of surprised about that branding with this, but they're going to release a TurboGrafx-16 Mini. This will be branded whatever the heck it was called in your country, by the way. It had many names, PC Engine, there was some other one. Uh, they have announced a few games for it so far, but mostly our type New Adventure Island, Ninja Spear, Wise Book 1 and 2, uh, Ninja Explorer and Alien Crush, which I believe is a pinball game, if I recall. So uh, a mini version. And by the way, no Bonk's Adventure or Revenge is on this. I did pick up a Bonk's Adventure game on uh, the Virtual Console on the Wii. Uh, so like that was my. I, I grabbed. You know, I was I was grabbing all the games that I was never able to get, like Turbo Graphics 16 at the time. So we picked up a couple of those and some N64 games that are hard to find, like Mario Kart 64. Right. So I mean, these were really good 16-bit games at the time. And maybe not as powerful as like maybe a Super Nintendo or something, but this was like around the NES days originally, wasn't that right, Chilla? Initially, I think initially, like it was one of the. I'm, like, try, I'm trying to place it like what system I had when they had that. I think it was more like Sega Genesis. Probably, <coughs> probably. I think it was it was just a a third ran with uh, with those guys. So, but uh, uh, but that'll be out. It is going to be out. Where was that release date? I know. Looks like late nineties or late eighties, early nineties. Late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, yeah uh, it uh, debuted in nineteen eighty nine, according to this article. Mm-hmm. So there you but go. They, they also haven't announced the full. Or maybe you mentioned it. They no. haven't announced the full. And a lot of them track. have been doing that. Hey, here's obviously there's going to be twenty games, but here's five. So mm-hmm. I don't know, sp- spreading it out. Maybe the licensing rights and stuff like that oh, that they yeah. have to work out. So um, you got to figure out who owns what at this point. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how like what. You know, who t- bought where, where? Who bought what company, and how did Konami get to release this thing? You know, it, like that's that seen that's the craziest thing to me, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, well, even the the controller, uh, the the plug-in controller games that we like uh, that, that that WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. I'm like, that was an Acclaim game. Acclaim went out of business. Who is this company doing this game right now that like actually modified it and took out Hulk Hogan? Um, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, do, 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 a lot of stuff going on out there. Uh, Dutters, what's Tesla doing? Tesla. This is this is a chilla thing, I think. Yeah, could be a chilla thing. Uh, Tesla is turning its showroom into an arcade. It's now through the thirtieth. Uh, they've got some games to come check out in their Tesla, so you can sit there and play video games. They're inviting families. 
and stuff. So this is this is how they're getting the families in there. Yep. You know, they, they keep adding uh, games to it. So what was the latest one that they've added here? Uh, Beach Buggy Racing 2. Beach Buggy Racing. It, you, and this is the giant, giant screen that's in the, in your mm-hmm. Tesla. Like, if you haven't seen it, the dashboard is very sparse, and you just have this giant, like, iPad tablet kind of thing that's hanging there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so th- this is mostly to... This is just an attraction for them to get people in the store i yep. guess yeah that's all it is, is, is it's, <laughs> you can sign up uh for the link you just sign up to experience the tesla arcade bring your mm. friends and family uh, until june 30th and it's a full library of games like uh atari Miss- mission control and asteroids or the beach buggy game and uh yeah through 22 tracks on that game i think that was missile command Oh, missile came in. Sorry, I can't read yes. words. Uh, players can recruit new drivers. See if you can find our favorite. And use the steering wheel controls for the most immersive gaming experience. <laughs> Don't accidentally Could, put it in the gear. <laughs> so will this be available at the one that's in Ross Park Mall? Yes, they, they list uh, oh, Ross listed. Park, Wexford. Yeah, there's two near us. Oh, nice. Right. Oh, right. oh, Wexford just, too. Just sign up. You just got to RSVP, sign up, whether you're bringing a guest. Go check it out. You need to go, Chilla, and just tell us what this is like. I, can, I might be able to. That's fantastic, uh, Chilla. What's uh, what's Adam Savage doing these days? Oh, so this is all you. Did you did you <laughs> see this? No. So I'm not gonna lie. I saw this on the way here. Yeah. To the show, and it's a nine minute video, so I didn't get to watch it all the way through to see how really realistic it but is. No, it's really realistic. Okay. So pretty much some somebody else built kind of like the hover backpack slash jet thruster technology. Okay. Which I guess is extremely heavy and takes some training to use it. (laughs) And then Adam Savage built onto that and attached it to a Iron Man suit build that was, that's built out of titanium. He found once they were able to 3d print using titanium, they, he used the 3d printer to print a titanium Iron Man suit. All right, let's see what we got here. So there's a little bit. This is a CNET video that they have going on here. I want to skip ahead. Uh, and they actually Iron shoot at the. They shoot at the Iron Man armor with 22 nine millimeter and 45 bullets. So here's him testing the the um, I guess the the hand and jet back pack uh, uh, attached. A lot safer than the uh, Tony Stark one. It's just kind of hanging on a string here. And uh, so as he goes, he just develops around it basically around the backpack you mean yeah yes oh there he is and he, he made it look like iron man he actually made it look like iron man yeah and like if you go to like 503 he's yeah he's on the string learning how to use mm-hmm. the stuff and then they go to the point and this might be part of the teaser go to like 748 748 I say there he is yeah yeah that's him in the suit using the hover tech i don't know if they have them shooting at the armor wow that's awesome so he's got these like kind of hand jets for control while the backpack i think is mostly picking him up and he actually does fly and hover over to the platform that's awesome so there you go chilla your your iron man suit is out there and it's just waiting for you to, to take a crack at it. I feel like that's that's got to take a lot of body control to do that, right? It looks like it. I don't know. But he, I mean, it said he took a couple lessons with it. There, it's going to be a whole episode on the Discovery Channel. So I'm hoping, versus trying to cram cram it all into a nine minute YouTube video. It's not still. It's not still. Um, uh, Mythbusters anymore, right? No, he's so it's con- it's considered he's former Mythbuster. Yeah, Adam Savage. Um, there was a, the new show called Savage Builds, and it's okay. stuff that he's built since Mythbusters. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, you leave Mythbusters, why not build an Iron Man suit? <laughs> why not, right? <laughs> so, so the whoa. show launched on Friday. Um, so I'm hoping I can find a. a Either a replay and record it on Discovery or, or find the full... Maybe on the app or something. Yeah, the so. full episode. Uh, Katie, what's going on with Air Power? What's like uh, a nice... This, this is, uh, it's all about Chilla Day. I keep finding things for Chilla. <laughs> so we've not gotten our Air Power yet. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we're not, right? We're not, yeah. It's kind of the ghosted us back in March. 
so sad. Uh, essentially, uh, there's a new company, or there's going to be a bunch of knockoffs, essentially, since Air Power is not coming out. Other people are like, sure, let me do it. Um, Air Unleashed is one of them. It's $99. Uh, apparently it works decently it seems like from this article um so you may have to check it out essentially it's a flat space and you charge all your apple devices on it boop, boop. um you have to up- essentially make sure you're on the most recent updates for your devices or it may not work <laughs> it seems to be a thing but there's supposed to be a spot for the iphone apple watch and airpods mm-hmm. there they are all lined up there this is what you need chill right well, my question is so one of the big things about the the original Apple version of this was you could throw the de- any of the devices down any which way, any way they would fit on the mat. This seems a little bit more. This seems like you gotta put your phone rings. on your left, put yep. your watch in the middle, put your eye- AirPods off to the right, and make sure they're blinking everything. And I'll be honest with you, even with, and I have a pretty big charge mat, and it's probably a combination of the size of the charge mat, um, the thickness of my case, mm-hmm. um, I have a feeling like, I mean, I it has some liberty with where I can exactly place it on the mat, but I kind of do have to get, I have to watch for the light to light up to make sure it's charging at night because there's been a couple times now where I've put the phone down. That's the thing that keeps me because I'm always worried about the because even even the Apple Watch charger, I wait and make sure I saw the th- the wheel click in. Right, like that that charging wheel wherever it is. So my my mat has a light on the bottom of it mm-hmm. that's not so bright that it's going to keep you up at night, but mm-hmm. bright enough that you can see it when the phone's Look on top of see, it. Oh, there it is. So that's what I do. I put my phone on top of it and then wait for that light to turn on, and it's pretty instantaneous. Um, but I know if it doesn't come on, then I need to to wiggle the the phone. <laughs> it's phone wiggling time. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> Awesome. So that is the, uh, what was it called again? The Air Power. Air, Air Unleashed. And if you look at the box, it's very, very Apple-esque. Oh, yeah. Let me pull that box up here. <laughs> look at uh, this. Yeah, that looks like suspicious. somebody's getting sued. Uh, you think they'll carry this in an Apple store? <laughs> no. Sneak- mm-hmm. Sneakily. I don't know. You could probably <clears throat> put it in there and nobody would notice for a little while. I mean, the employees would notice after a while, but you could probably sneak it in there. They're like, very strict. Lungs. Yeah. So I'm guessing... The only people that could get away with getting this in an Apple store is going to be like a a Logitech or a Belkin. Right. Yeah. Or, right. or one of those. True, true. Because here, and here's the problem is even in the, the Apple, Apple even has standards for those where they have to have a redesigned box. They mm-hmm. have to meet specific things that Apple wants the device to be able to do. This one has three different wattages. For the three different coils, mm-hmm. and I'm guessing it's not like they auto adapt or or whatnot. So again, you're gonna have customers that come in and say, "I placed my phone on here, and it didn't even get to a hundred percent overnight." And they're gonna be like, "Well, you put it on the watch section, and it's mm-hmm. only a two watt charger versus the seven and a half." Yeah, I just don't see this. Seems for for me and you, and we know what we're doing, but for. Yeah. The I ge- wouldn't hand this to my mom. The, ge- <laughs> the general Apple com- yeah. customer, right? Chilla, what's going on with RCS? Are we finally going to get our enhanced chat? <laughs> It'll be interesting. So RCS stands for Rich Communication Service. This is something at, um, Google was working with all of the network providers to switch from SMS to RCS, mm-hmm. which would then get Android messages, things like, oh, I can tell that someone's actually responding to me. I could get delivery receipts. And supposedly this would also come over to iPhones and any other phone too, right? right? So I mean, what else is there? The problem is is it, it was dependent on all of the carriers kind of coming to an agreement and yeah. passing all this data back and forth. Um, they've kind of botched that. Um, so Google's taking it upon themselves and it is coming. RCS will come out to the UK and France, Belgium. It was to two European countries first and should be out to the rest of the world. They're claiming by the end of the year. Okay. Um, this is pretty cool, but some of the things they lose because Google's going to have to play, intermediary they're gonna lose it'll be 
end to end encrypted, but it won't be some of the pieces in between, like on the device or something like that, won't actually be encrypted. Mm-hmm. Um, because the way they have to pass data back and forth. Um, yeah, the UK and France are going to be the first one to get it. Um, the other thing you won't get is you won't be able to get this across multiple devices from what it seems like. Okay. Um, so iMessage, right? I get the same chat, same everything synchronized across my iPad, my iPhone, whatever, um, my Mac. This won't do that. They'll have a web version that'll be synchronized via QR code. Um, and, but will actually just be echoing and bouncing the messages off your mobile device. Hmm. So it's cool and interesting. I'll be, I hope it comes to iOS as well, because I would actually think about using this with the green bubble people. Mm-hmm. Because I have a few people that are green bubblers. Yeah. And it would be nice to see delivery receipts is someone typing. Mm-hmm. I won't have to deal with the so and so liked this message because on uh, for the iOS people like it's like the thumbs up type thing, but mm-hmm. when you get into this hybrid communication with the green bubble people, all bets are off. Yep. Yep. So and so just ha ha this message. Yeah, so I'm like <laughs> okay, whatever. Well, that, that actually so they that's interesting because some people will do that and, and your watch will actually get the so-and-so ha ha Yes. Right? So, like, that's not even transfer... You know, as a message, I guess it wouldn't otherwise, right? So, or so-and-so, just put a Mario sticker on your speech bubble. You know, which I haven't done that in a while. Like it, 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 Again, feels like a thing we played with... Wait till you get all your emojis as stickers. Oh, mm-hmm. there you go. I don't have my emoji. I don't have a... I, uh, I'm the only one without, without... Wait till you get a new phone and you can emoji <laughs> I got about another year to pay for mine. So, uh, I, although it was a little bit of like, is it time for me to get face technology with the next iPhone? Is it, you know, is, is that worthwhile for me at this point? So I don't know. I'm, I'm happy with my eight right now. I'm old school. I'm, I'm like the, I'm like the iPhone hipster at this point. Look at me. I got like, you know, bar, no notch or anything. No notch. No notch. Whoa. So, all right. I, I, have an, I have a 3GS if you really want to roll back time. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know. I got, I got, no, I have an original one in my drawer that still boots up. <laughs> so, a 3GS is, I don't, I don't think they boot quite as well. Anyways, hey, you know what doesn't have a notch? Our friends at Slice on Broadway. Unless you ate a notch into your pizza. Uh, but our good friends over there at Slice on Broadway. These guys have been expanding so quick. I got a sticker today that only has their three locations. It doesn't have the East End on it. But it does have the other ones. Beachview, Carnegie, uh, as well as PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. But you can also check them out out on the East End. They've been feeding uh, our show for a good a long time. Most of the nine years, actually, that I think about it. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza our friends at slice on broadway they have stickers uh as well as a great great pizza and other food items that you will enjoy go check them out slice on broadway.com and check them out in person and let them know that the awesome cast sent you all right uh what geez what's going on uh crazy Krauss will be with us next week Oh, really? uh, so a look out. I just confirmed him today and, uh, and, and we'll see who we want to get for July here. If there's anybody you want to return to the show, please let me know and I will reach out to them and I won't mess up scheduling and uncle crappy them. <laughs> uh, so there's that. Uh, but, uh, anyways, we should get Jim Loke. I don't know if he'll come on the show now that his face is on the side of buses. Yeah. So he might be too cool for us. I mean, is, is, is like bus face people too big for awesome cast? Bus face people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hello, bus face people. John Chichilla is at Chilla on the tweeters. Uh, John Chichilla on the Facebook, chillatech.net. There you go. And Katie Dutters. K Dutters. Yeah, in places. On Cambry places PJ. and things. I do things. You can see the last videos of Scarehouse. Yeah. I guess they were sad. <laughs> they were very sad. Were they? Okay. Yeah. The the thing that blows my mind is that is that um, scene in the basement. Yeah. And like... I remember you guys telling me that there's a bowling alley down there. Yeah. But I didn't realize it looked like I could turn on the bowling alley and go bowl. You could. It's like I didn't know. It's I functional. Didn't, I didn't realize it was a ready to go bowling. Alley. I thought it was just a decrepit bowling alley <laughs> that she covered up. I know. No, it's, it's just nice it, we fancy. It is. It is. 
We took good care of it. That is good. (laughs) That's awesome. So go check those out on the Scarehouse social media and stay tuned there for what's going to be coming up. There's so many announcements and things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff and partnerships and, you know. Shenanigans. I'm sure. Hey, a lot of of room. Everybody's like, it's going to get easier, right? For you, I'm Mm -mm. like, "Mm, no. Mm -mm. (laughs) Not our style. Where do you have your meetings now? Ah. (laughs) (laughs) That's a secret. In your basement with your cat. Yeah, that would be yeah. amazing. <laughs> uh, and, of course, check out everything Sorgatron on my Twitter. You can check out what's going on. Like I said, I'll be going to Nebraska once again, maybe for the last time. Who knows? Uh, this week. So um, I go see some Formula cars and stuff out of that. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Last trip for the SA- SAE for the year. And I'm excited to get into the video editing for all that. All the last several months of things that we've been doing with them. And a lot of great projects coming up. And like I said, stay tuned. If you haven't yet, subscribe to our friends over at Innovation Works, Caffeinated Innovation. Uh, season 2 uh, will be launching here, I believe, in July. Um, getting the final date on that. Uh, but we've been recording with them this week. And I'm very excited You know, talking with some awesome companies that have been through the Alpha Lab programs and everything like that. Uh, so if you, if you liked our awesome chat, you're going to love uh, listening to Jennifer for and Pam uh, in these interviews that we've been recording uh, this week and going to be some more in July as well. So keep an eye out for that. A few pics are over on the Instagram as well. Some behind the scenes and over on their social media as well for Innovation Wars IWPGH to check that out. So uh, thank you, Producer Missy, for keeping things straight and giving my notes so I know what the heck I'm doing today. And uh, until then, thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.